Welcome back everyone, Akowski here, and this is a follow-up video on an update I made to my Teleport Illusion place. Um, the update is actually, as the title suggests, multiplayer, so uh, if you were here for my last project and you actually saw how it worked and you tested it in multiplayer, you would see that uh, it only really works for single player because uh, if one player sees another player cross the boundary, they would actually see them disappear as soon as they hit the boundary and that kind of broke the illusion. So in this um, edited version, I've actually made it work for multiplayer by changing uh, the ways players see each other. And I'll go over how I did that um, in the code. But as you can see, most of these players can go right through the portal uh, together. Uh, no problems there. I can also walk around here and go back to the original world and I won't see the player. And if I go through it one more time, I'll see the other player and he can see me. I also, um, well this is like the first major step in turning this from just a showcase and a video into something that one of you guys could actually put into a game, so that's kind of why I really wanted to do this. And also I had never gotten this many comments about a specific um, topic before, but people kept bringing up backrooms and I had no idea what a backroom was uh, before this. but. Uh, basically, it's just a type of a game type, uh, like a horror game type, and people thought this would look really cool in a backrooms game. So I quickly put together one of those after making this, and that project file will be in the description uh, as well for you guys to see. All right, so before we actually look at the code, let's go ahead and look at uh, some of these parts that I've gone ahead and added since then. Um, I have this new exit part, which lets me know when the player exits the building. And door A and door B are still here. These are the two doors. Of course, door C and door D are over there. And then I also have this part called cam box. Cam box lets me know if the part, or I'm sorry, if the camera is actually inside the box. Uh, if as long as you're inside this box, uh, but you're not in one of these red boxes, then I know the camera is inside the building. And all of these parts are the same on the other building as well. I also have this part called uh, World Divider, which I will compare player positions against this part um, relative to try to figure out which world they're in. So if they're on one side, then they're on one world. If they're on the other side, then they're uh, in another world. So all those parts are useful. Uh, and trying to figure everything out. So I'm going to go ahead and set these all back to uh, transparent and we'll look at the code. All right, so uh, of course, multiplayer means we're probably we're going to have a client and a server script. Server scripts are real simple. Um, <clears throat> basically, this is the same script as before, but just with some more stuff added on. For example, these two functions are the same as before. This teleports you. Uh, to one world and to the other. Um, set the part or set the Senate transparency. Uh, this is actually what I use to change uh, all the descendants of a world uh, to one and then back to what it was before. Uh, part intersects point is now two functions because of the negatives inside the cam box. So what it'll do is it'll First, see if you're inside any of the negatives, it will return false. If you're not inside any of the negative parts, then it um, returns part intersects point two, and part intersects point two is just the same function as before. Um, these three functions are what send your C frame to the server and get your uh, get C frames of other players. So the reason I put the C frame inside of a um, instance value instead of just looking at the character's root part C frame is because when you look at um, a root part C frame of another player you're actually seeing the you're not seeing their real C frame what you're seeing is how the server interpolated it so of course it's going to be very close but when you're teleporting from one building to the other uh, the server sees that and it decides to, since it sees such a big change, it decides to interpolate 
uh, between that change, and it's always interpolating, but you see it the most when you're teleporting. And if you try to read that C frame from the server, you'll see um, a lot of times for a few frames that the player C frame ends up being in between the two buildings, when in reality we want to see a C frame that's inside the building. So to cut out interpolation on, from the server, every character, uh, every client sends car info every frame by just sending a remote about what their current C frame and what their current state is. And then the server will put those into C frame values and the state to a string value. And then clients can read other clients um, car value, uh, what do you call it, C frames and states. So that's basically your uh, network code. Here's the main update function. Uh, it starts out basically the same as last time. Um, if you're in door A, your state's A, stuff like that. Um, if you cross the border uh, between A and B, then it'll teleport you to another building, so on and so forth. Um, but then uh, we get down to here, replication in from other players. And this is all about, it, it looks like a lot, but it's all about trying to figure out where uh, other players are. If they're in door A, if they're in door B, if they're in world one, there's basically six different states that you can be in. So I'll draw the picture. So there's six different states that a player can be in, right? There's world one, there's world two, right? And then there's uh, being inside door A and being inside door B. So the two different sides of the building, and then subsequently C and D, right? Now, the thing is, um, without a teleport, it would just be like two little circles. But obviously, because of the teleport, um, A takes you to D, and then D can take you to world two, and then world two can take you to C, and then C can take you to... Um, takes you to B, and then B takes you to world one. So what you end up with is kind of a circle. If I redraw this as a circle that looks like this instead, um, we can actually see that anywhere you are on the circle, you can see players that are in the regions that are directly adjacent. So for example, if you're in world two, you can see anyone that's in D, or you can see anyone that's in C. If you're in uh, door B, you can see anyone in C, and you can see anyone in world 1, but you can't see anything else. So that's exactly what this piece of code is trying to uh, play out. Figures out what world you're in, figures out which side of the building you're in, goes through, iterates through all the other players, looks at what world they're in, looks at um, what their state is, uh, figures out what their C frame should be, and figures out if you're in the same world. So for example, once again, um, if if your camera is not in the cam box and your world is world one, that means you're part of world one. That means you can see things that are in uh, B, world one, or A. So then it looks at the other player. Are you in B? Are you in world one? Or are you in A? And then, you car, then your cars in the same world will be true, otherwise that'll be false. Once we figure that out, um, we say, okay, just C frame them if they're in the same world. Uh, if they're not in the same world, then make sure they're in different C frames. Uh, right here is where I re add in interpolation. So for most times, I'll just interpolate with a alpha 0.5 so that we have smoothness uh, in player character. And I'm pretty sure that's what the server does is 0 0.5 because it looks the same. Uh, but if the distance between uh, where they're currently at and where I want them to be is very large, so like greater than 16, uh, then it'll actually end up just not interpolating at all so that we don't have interpolation during teleports. Uh, lastly, this part just uh, sets the transparency of other players that are in other worlds so that you can't see them uh, when they're in a different world. 
because um, you'll just see them floating around if if not for this and that's pretty much it another quick thing that i want to point out is that uh one of my discord members actually brought this uh showed this to me in my server uh this is a bug but if you stand right here and you zoom out and then you swing the camera you actually teleport uh to the other world and the reason this happens is because um the logic only cares about does your camera go through here? Because that's like the most important part for what decides if you teleport between worlds. See, I'm moving my camera across this boundary. So if you actually swing the camera through here, it teleports you. And the reason why, if I walk over here, is that um, Roblox's default camera will push, it raycasts from uh, your character to parts to determine uh, like if there's a wall but if you swing it really fast it'll ignore it and that's actually a really a uh, nice quality feature of the Roblox camera uh, but to fix that because I didn't want that to actually happen in here I go ahead and uh, copy the player module and then I go player module camera module zoom controller and then popper because that's the actual uh, where the code for ray casting is going to be for the camera and here's the main popper function it calls query viewport and then query viewport calls query point and then uh, right here you can see where it calls ray casts and whatnot and the part that it hits on the ray cast is called entry part and then right here is where it decides if this should be a hard limit or a soft limit. And that basically means, um, should this actually be treated as something that I need to limit the camera to? And what I've done is I've added this little piece of code that I commented out. And it just says, if entry part is a descendant of world one building or the other building, which is my two teleport buildings, then always consider it a hard limit. Don't It doesn't matter how fast you're going through it always consider it a hard limit. So if we go ahead and play it again, we actually should not be able to do that. So for my game example, this is my uh, backrooms map that I actually uh, built myself. Uh, and on one end, we have this section and we have this section on the other end. And these are actually duplicates of each other so they can be seamlessly teleported uh, from one to another and so let me just head in and I'm gonna have one player head one way and I'm gonna have the other player head the other way and I really like this because kind of makes the map seem uh, even bigger than it actually is while also simultaneously uh, at least in my opinion have the players run into each other more often because the map is actually smaller than it seems like it is. But as you can see, uh, these two players have met up with each other in this hallway. And we're just going to pass through and we'll meet back in the middle. Alright, so thanks for checking this out. Um, I really wanted to put this out because I felt like uh, the last video did really well, but it wasn't as good as I could have done. So with this update, I feel a lot better. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, in a future video.